Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I will try to convince you that you should not use console.log.warning or .error in your application. And we will also discuss a Winston package, which in my opinion is a much better alternative to these options. So reason number one why you might not want to use uh, console.log is let's now imagine that you have a big application and you want to change the place where you save the logs. You now need to develop a process that works on top of your application that takes logs and saves them somewhere. And this is, in my opinion, not the best from the design perspective. Now, a reason number two would be, let's imagine you want to differentiate between the log types, right? So you want to save the errors somewhere, the messages, the warning somewhere, and the just standard info messages in a different place. You would need to either be very consistent with your console.log.warning.error or you need to go into the application and change it everywhere. And three, not even speaking about the fact that you need to develop your custom functions which write the information to the files. While this is not the most difficult uh, topic, it becomes a lot to do, right? And you need to actually uh, do some refactoring most likely. And what really is Winston? So basically, Winston is a logging library for Node.js. Basically, it supports multiple transports, and the transport is just a fancy way of saying it allows you to save the logs in many places. What is supported by default is, for example, writing to a console, that's pretty standard, but writing to a file, and, for example, writing to MongoDB. On top of that, there are multiple community supported transports that basically allow you, allow you to write to most of the major uh, technologies that deal with locks. And this is, I think, great about Winston. So basically you get a package that is easily customizable, that you have many, many things that you can do many things with and that sa just saves you a lot of time in the development process. But okay. This is just words. I will try to attempt to show uh, that to you in practice. So for the purpose of this video, and there will be two parts to this Winston video. In this video, we'll basically use this dummy, very simple application, the most simple express application you can imagine. And in the second video, we'll go ahead and use the REST API that we've built and we'll implement a more advanced logic with Winston based on this REST API that I've built in a previous video. A link should show up currently to it somewhere on your screens. But okay, so this what this application does is basically it's just response with a, uh, with a status 200 when you go to the uh, home endpoint. And it just listens on port 4000. So if we basically go in here, create a new file, let's call it test.rest. In, a, in, a, in order to be able to do, to do that, you need the REST client extension. REST client extension in Visual Studio Code needs to be installed. And then you, what you're able to do is do a get HTTP, oops, colon, localhost 4000. And here I need to run npm run start to start the application. And now, once I have it started, I can send the response. And here you can see I have received the 200 response code. Next, what we need to do is I'll start up the second terminal now. And here in the second terminal, we need to say npmi, exp uh, not express, express view I already have, but I need to say Winston and then Winston, uh, sorry, express dot Winston. And why we are also installing express dash Winston is basically what we will be mostly talking about this video for real is the Express Winston version or like a wrapper around Winston. So basically something that extends Winston with additional possibilities that allow you to easily create a middleware function uh, for Node.js or for Express that basically allow you very easily to track the requests. And this is what we'll focus on in this video. So we'll focus on logging the requests and responses that our application sends, and then also on uh, handling, or maybe not handling, on logging errors, different types of errors. But okay, uh, let's go for it step by step. So this is our basic application. Let's now uh, say that we would like to uh, save the log. So we'd like to save all the data or not all the data, some data about the request that 
requests that we are getting with Winston. So what do we do now is we come in here and we say that we want to require, basically let's require express Winston and we want to from, require it from our express Winston package. Okay, then what we want to do is we want to say app.use. So basically this will be a middleware function, express winston.logger. And now for the logger definition. So what do we start off is we start off with transports. And for the transports, we, you can have multiple. This is why I have started an array. And once again, transports are places where you want to save your logs. So let's currently go with the most uh, simple one, and this will be uh, console, right? So we'll just say new, and here you, I'll uh, import this in a second. You'll say new transports dot console, right? So here, uh, Visual Studio Code has done a, almost a good job because we need the transports module. Okay, so this, these are for now all of our transports. We'll extend that in a second. Then what we need to de define are the formats of our log message. And for now, let's just say format dot timestamp. You'll see what we get in the second. And basically these are all our required settings. So if we currently make a request to our application, what you will see is that here we have an undefined displayed. And basically we have an undefined displayed, right? Because we have not defined anything that should be logged. And for now, let's just say format.json. So this will display the information in the JSON format. Okay, and that's it. Uh, let's now make a request. I will wait, I will bring this requests also right here. I will, let's send a request and now we have First off, we have a response to 100, but what we have here is basically the metadata of our request. So uh, we can make it in a slightly more readable format now, right now. So for this, we need to use, oops, uh, we need to use format.combine. So this function allows us to combine multiple formats together. We just need to put it here as arguments. So basically you apply the formats on top of each other, right? So first I create a JSON and then I say pretty, uh, pretty, pretty print, right? And now if I make this request, basically what we see is like a nice pretty printed version of the log. Okay, so what we can still add under the log files is we can say format.timestamp. And what I need to hear in the comma. And what this will do is I think something very useful is here, if you take a look, we will now get a timestamp where this request has been sent. So basically here we can see the basic information about our request, which is logs, which is logged, right? So here we have the URL, here we have what headers were received, what was the method, what was the query string, if there was any, and what was our response code. Uh, and also what is the info, right? It's level of the, the log. So basically this is like a standard info message. And here, what you can see now is first off, we've done the pretty very simple. Uh, and second of all, it's it would not be so simple in Express to implement the functionality that also attaches the response part right here. So here, if you wanted to change what's log about a request by default, basically, a, um, Express Winston supports like whitelists and blacklist. I think they are about, or they either did already change the naming here uh, from like allow list to, and denial list, uh, and then from uh, the master branch in their Git repository also to um, to main branch. But basically, so they will have to check the documentation. But basically, it allows you to configure it what default information you log about a request, right? So you can change the contents of this JSON object or of this JSON. Okay, but this is for now relatively boring. So basically let's create some more routes. So by some more routes, let's, let's for example, create a 403 route. Let's create a 500 route, right? And here let's say four, uh, four let's make it a 400, not 403. 
right? So here, just like an incorrect request, and here let's return 500. And then also let's create, or maybe let's keep it uh, like this for now. And here, let's uh, create some more requests to this. Let's do a request on slash 400, and let's do a request on slash 500. Right, and if I send a request to 500, I get a 500 response. And this has logged also this request on URL slash 500. And we have sent a response code, uh, a response with status code 500. Now, what Winston allows us to do, right, is currently we are logging everything to the console. And let's keep it that way. But what you also might, might want to do is you might want to keep the warnings and the errors, and I will get to what this means in a second, in a file, right? So let's currently implement this. So basically a warning by default for Winston, and you can change that by the way with like dy dynamic function assignments. We'll not get into this, but this is a very clearly described in the documentation. You can basically differentiate between the warnings and the errors, right? So 400 will be warnings, 500 is an error. So let's currently do, what you have to do is you have to define new transport, so basically dot file, and now here you need basically two things. One, you need the level, I think it defaults to info, but we, what we want is we want to warn, and then you need file name. File name, if it doesn't exist, it will be created, let's say logs warnings dot log, and let's also create a new transport for the errors. So lever error, and let's say logs errors dot log. Okay, here you can see the files were created. Okay, let's once again try to send this request, right? So we send a um, 200, uh, so basically to this route, so where we receive a status code 200, so for now we don't have anything. But if I send a request to the slash 400 route, I would expect currently this request to be saved right here. And currently it's not doing that because we need to pass in one of the configuration properties right here. So basically this logger has a ton of configuration options. You can, for example, colorize the output, right? That's very common. Like, or sadly, does not work with PowerShell that I'm currently using on Windows. It kind of sucks, but okay. Uh, what uh, we need to do is right here, I need to say comma, and then I need to say status levels. And this is a Boolean, this needs to be true. So if I save this and I send this once again, Right now we can see that the level is worn, and then if I open this file, oh, it has opened right there, I can see that the information about the request has have been locked and have been saved here. Let's test it with 500. I will send the request. So here we can see response 500. Here we can see level error. And if I go into the errors file, I see that everything has been locked here nicely. Another cool thing I'd like to show you is Winston also gives us the possibility to save the logs directly to MongoDB. So basically this is supported by the creators of Winston. So basically what you need to say is also you say new transports dot MongoDB. And here you need to specify the DB. So here you specify the database URI. Uh, you also have other authentication options, I think. But what I will do is I have it this configured uh, as an environmental variable, var environment variable. So basically I would say just mongodb underscore URI. And in order for this to work, I need to actually uh, add it as an environment variable. Here, I will not show you this because this contains my passwords and my username, but I will just, oops, config. And we don't, don't have the .env here. So I need to say npm i.env and here I need to create a .env package and sadly I will not show you the contents of it because it will contain the password to my uh, database. Okay, so I successfully saved the .env file. Now I'll start the database once again. Okay, it has crashed once again. What did I... Uh, I know I did it wrong. So basically, uh, by default, this uh, MongoDB is not included in the transports 
module, what we need to do is you need to say require Winston dash MongoDB. And of course, to require it, you would have to say npm i Winston dash MongoDB. And now this will be installed. And basically, you will have access or will have access to uh, this MongoDB. Exactly. Now it's uh, it's basically seen as a class and I have this MongoDB URI and basically what I need to do is you only need to or you don't need to because there's a default but I will specify a collection name of basically uh, where you want to save your logs and without specifying a level it will save all the logs. Okay so I will just send some of those requests once again and here I will shortly show you uh, the MongoDB instance where this is being now saved. And here is my MongoDB instance that I have hosted on Atlas. Basically, it's not very complex. If you go to cloud.mongodb.com, there you can create a free version of the MongoDB database. They have a great explanations of how things works here. Basically, maybe uh, there is a video coming on MongoDB soon or not so soon on the channel. But basically what I wanted to show you is here I have this logs, right? And here if I go into the logs, what we will be able to see is we will be able to see the essentially the log messages, right? So here the HTTP get, HTTP get 400, HTTP get 500. The one thing which is missing is the meta is currently null. So we don't see any metadata about the request. What we need to do in order to change that is we need to go back to our um, app Winston here, uh, or actually it's here, this one. Uh, okay, and here we what we need to add is we need to add format dot metadata. So this will actually not change very much in terms of how our standard process logs, right? This will still look very much the same, uh, except for the fact that now we'll have this metadata kind of inside a, another metadata object. And this actually, if I now switch uh, right here, what you will basically see right now is for the new documents, right? We have five new documents. We have, or we have two new documents. We currently have access to the meta object here, right? And we can see the request and the response properties. And this is basically what allows us to see uh, this instance. This is basically what allows us to see uh, the, the data or the information about our request and also the information about our responses. Okay, so we already know how do we differentiate between different types of error levels, right? And I would just like you now, uh, I would just like you to pay attention basically how easy this was, right? We did not have to get into the code of application, which of course now is extremely sim simple, but it can be much more, more, much more complex. And we didn't have to modify basically anything. And we have added a ton of very useful, very customizable and flexible logging possibilities. And what we also, what I would like to also show you is I will shortly create a route which will be called slash error. And this route will just throw an error. Actually, like here, right? So we'll throw new error. This is a custom error, whatever. Doesn't really matter. Now afterwards, and this is important, in the Express Winston uh, documentation, there are many or not many, there are some dependencies uh, written right so before so for example we need to have this part this middleware before our routes and we will need to have the middleware that we'll just create in a second that will basically not handle but will log our errors our internal application errors basically uh, it will it will it needs to be created after these routes Right, but before your express error handlers, and there's a video on express error handlers coming soon. Um, for now, it's not yet up. So basically, here we now be able to define a logger that will log the internal errors of our application. So not the requests by them, but themselves, by themselves, but act the actual errors. 
So let's currently see, because I created this new route, let's try to send a request. Let's see what happens, right? So here, and by the way, I will remove this MongoDB transport so that there is not that much stuff saved. We've seen that it works. It's, I think it's a cool feature. But I will, let's now focus on the console and on the files. So I'll now send this request, right? So we have gotten a, a, a 500, right? Um, and let's currently see, maybe I'll clean this file, send this once again. And exactly. So here what we uh, what we can see, right, is we can't see essentially the, the trace of the error, right? So by trace, I mean, we can't see this part. So we can't see where this occurred. We just can see the request data, right? So this has not logged the er actual error of our application. So what we need to do is we need to come in here and say, once again, app.use. Once again, we say express winston.error logger. And for the error logger, we also need to sp specify the, the transports, right? And here, once again, we say new transports dot file. And now let's specify that we want to save that to a file. Oops. And here our file name, let's say internal or let's say maybe logs internal errors dot log. And that's mainly it. So now we also need formats. Let's also say I don't know, format dot timestamp. And here, let's see what happens if we send this request. So we already have the file created right here. But once again, here we have undefined and we have undefined because we didn't actually specify any format besides the timestamp. So let's go back to our application here. Let's once again use here was the format.combine function. And we put this inside here and we put this format.json before this comma needs to be here and I need to save it Let's see if it's running it's crashed okay it's crashed again because I made a typo in format okay it's running uh, let's save this and we get our error this is a custom error and now we should have it very nicely here right so here you can't see it very well but basically we have the error message and but it's not very readable currently for us and what we can make right now to make it a little bit better is we can basically make our custom format and how you essentially do that is very simple let's go into our app file let's go up maybe here and let's just say const my format. And what, what we will use is we'll use the format.printf. So this is like a Winston, uh, and the format comes from Winston. So basically this is a Winston module and the printf function, what it allows us to do is it allows us to define a function. In our case, I will take the mat level meta and timestamp. And these are the top level information from this, uh, this, file right so level message meta and the timestamp which is somewhere here i can't find it currently but what i will do is currently i will define the function here okay um, of course the functions are defined with a parenthesis okay here and here, the, what the function will do, it, was, it will return us a string where it will begin with a timestamp. So essentially I'm defining a format, right? Then it will have a level, oops, like this, dollar sign, uh, a level. And then it will display us the from the meta object, just the message. And now if I take this and I put my format here, so I apply my format. I will remove everything that we have here currently and I will sh save the request once again, go in here. What we can see is a very nicely formatted error message, right? So here we have the timestamp, we have a level of this and we have 
the error message. So basically like a very much easier to debug, much easier, uh, much uh, easier to work with. So uh, very important thing to not, not mention here, this sh should be defined before the express error handlers, because this is not handling the error. This is just saving the information that you would otherwise see in the console and it's really forwarding the error further. So basically you need to handle the errors in a different place. This just saves the information. But okay, this is our error handler. One last thing I'd like to show you is we have a slight issue with the current setup because let's imagine that we now want to use this logger inside our application, right? Let's now imagine that we want to use, that we want to say, I don't know, user created or whatever, a user has logged in. We just want to display like an info or a debugging message for us. We can't really do that, right? We can't, don't have access to this logger right here. I can't just say logger dot whatever info and here like write a message. I can't do that currently, or maybe I can, but I don't know how easily. Um, what we need to do, and I think in general, I would recommend that we can, instead of providing all the options here, we can just create a separate file. Let's call it logger.js. Now inside this logger.js file, what we can do is we can say const logger equals create logger and Visual Studio Code has imported it from our reinstall package. That's correct. And basically here we copy all the information that we have right here. So we put it right here, right? We have our transports, we have our formats, we have our status levels set to true. Or actually status level is a an option of the um, of the main of the express is an express Winston specific option. Therefore I will remove it from here. We'll add it back in our express Winston. And here I also need to import the um, format and transports. Okay, and now we need to export it. So module exports logger. And here in our application, we currently need to say that we want to import this, right? So here we want to say const logger equals require require um, we want to go to logger. Okay, so now we have our logger and basically uh, what we can do is instead of saying all of these parts, what we can say is, oh, let's get it right. So basically we still want to have the, um, here this part, we only don't need this part. Okay, here what we need to say is Winston instance logger and the status level remains the same. So basically now we have it much easier, right? So we just are using the instance of the logger that we have created in the logger.js file. Let's quickly verify this if this works by sending like a request to an error route. Oops. Okay, uh, we have this. So this has been saved. This works still. And currently what I can do is I can come in here into the route and I can say logger.info, right? And this is an info log, right? I can, I can come in here and say logger.warn. This is a warn log, right? Let's see if this works maybe. I will remove this part, uh, let's send the 400, right? So this will create here two messages, exactly. So here you have like one message that basically was with the warn level and this is my custom message. You can see that it also has the timestamp added and here you can see, you can see, really see the requests. Now how we want to do it is really up to you because maybe you want to have the these messages, uh, sorry, these messages that you uh, customly create, you want to have them saved in a different place then you just should create two different instances 
of the logger, right? So you can you have like this logger right here that is basically used for the custom messages and you have a different, you can have a different logger instance, for example, the one we had here before for the uh, requests, right? So this doesn't really matter. You can also think about here, you, you probably can like differentiate between different types of messages, but I don't really know if, if this is worth, if I had to do something like this. I would just define two different loggers. One would be uh, instances, one basically would log for me all the messages and one would log the requests that we are getting. So this is it for this part of the Winston video. I hope you find this introduction interesting and useful for you. And in the second part of this video, we'll go back to our REST API that we have implemented and we will actually apply the Winston logging mechanisms. And I think I mentioned performance at the beginning and many people mention, actually do mention that. And to be honest, it's pretty hard to judge. Um, if there is an impact, the impact is minimal, maybe up to 10%. So like the Winston is either 10% quicker if you just do the basic things or maybe 10% slower. And of course, if you start logging to the database and so on and so on and so forth, then it may become a little bit slow, but in general, I would judge the impact on performance as insignificant, or maybe Winston would be slightly, slightly better here, but I would definitely value the functional and the usability advantages much more. Okay. So once again, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.